you asked i delivered playing cologne scores on the doors you know the fucking drill because you asked for it every single last one of you all right that's probably a slight exaggeration you didn't all ask for it but some of you did so here we're gonna do what we do we're gonna give them scores you're gonna agree or disagree in the comments let's go bottom to top i won't talk about the teams that made it to cologne proper because i already gave them their scores go check out the other video if you want to know those we'll start with pain now pain are one of those teams coming out of brazil it's hard for pain right because at the moment coming out of the brazil region you got mibr you got imperial you got oo nation oo nation and imperial don't really play in brazil at the moment i think they're pretty much in europe most of the time playing so you've only really got MIBR and Pain, and then MIBR, I think, spending a lot of their time not playing uh, in South America. I think they're in Europe a lot. How often do we think these guys are in Europe? I mean, they've got to be in Europe a decent chunk of the time, right? Okay, they're doing a lot of North American stuff, but they, they've got to turn up to, into Europe for like this. They obviously came to Europe, uh, MIBR, at the start of the year. So what I'm basically trying to say is Payne come out of a region where they're probably the best team, right? They're probably the best team in the Americas that actually plays in the Americas regularly, full stop. I can't imagine the scrim practice is always great. I can't imagine just generally the environment for improving past the point they've already reached is particularly good. So Payne basically come to these European tournaments probably without the best of preparation, unless they're going to stick a long ass boot camp ahead of the event which i would say they probably should do anyway it's always going to be hard for pain to come to these events and, and do much um obviously they did pretty well here they got Maus to overtime uh and then they did take a map off of sprout ultimately comfortably beaten big Uzera is the truth he seems to be uh, a, a real fragger seems to do really well um the rest of the pain lineup when they come to europe at least seem to be up and down i think it's hard to have massive expectations on pain honestly if i looked at this team list before um let's just go down and look at the team list right pretend i don't know who's qualifying you're looking at pain towards the bottom and saying okay they're probably not one of the favorite teams to get out of this qualifier you're probably looking at like basically up to outsiders being lock-ins and then like maus or maybe sprout on a correct today or maybe imperial do you know what i mean you're you're probably not looking at pain to go through so were they expected to go through this qualifier probably not i'd probably give them a c honestly i think this is about expectations they battled weren't successful they did take a map they ran mouse to overtime or nuke like pain turned up and gave a decent account of themselves here in the play-in I wasn't expecting anything more for them, really. I saw a world where they could qualify, really only order and Tai Lu and complexity with the teams I thought had probably like next to no chance um, of qualifying through this play-in. So yeah, I think Payne just get a C. It, it, yes, they didn't qualify. Yes, they go out in last place or whatever, but it, it, it's fine. They don't have the biggest expectations on them, whatever. Next up is complexity. Um, at this point, my expectations for complexity are quite literally rock bottom um junior had a good game probably one of his very few good games against decent opposition um but they obviously lose this anyway go down to the lower bracket get comfortably 2-0'd by astralis who turned out to be in decent form this event so maybe no shame there in losing to uh, astralis I i'm uh, complexity got nowhere near they did have a reasonably tough draw in playing Spirit and then Astralis. Like, they could have had... Look at the other matchups they could have gotten. Like, anybody else except Astralis would have been a better matchup in their lower bracket. So, like, honestly, my expectations are so low for complexity. I think they're just going to get a C. Like, I expected them to go out. They did. They got a tough draw. Otherwise, I might give them a C- minus or a D+, plus, like, if they'd had a harder draw and gone out in two games. But they had a tough draw. I expect nothing from complexity in these type of caliber of events. They get a C. It's whatever. Uh, complexity need to dump Junior. He's clearly not good enough to be playing with the AWP um on a team like complexity the team just generally looks a mess has no isn't competitive at all they don't even look like they really know what they're doing in game like uh, there doesn't look to be like a coherent identity or structure to the way they play counter-strike it, it, it's pretty bad um 
they're never going to get anything done in Europe. If they continue with this lineup and to play the way they play, they're never going to do anything in Europe. Next up, MIBR. I am actually disappointed with MIBR. Okay, they had a pretty close game against Movistar Riders, and we found out that Movistar Riders were actually one of the best teams at this event. Um, this is the disappointing one, man. You, you've got to beat Tai Lu. Um, you've got to beat Tai Lu in an elimination series. Um, obviously, MIBR have dropped their in-game leader, Woody, and brought in Brennazan from the academy. Um, I'm, Brennazan is the best I can pronounce it, by the way. If, there, if there's a better way of pronouncing it, I'm sorry. I'm not cut out for it. My mouth is too simple. Brennazan. That's what I can manage. Uh, and, and as we see, Mao's like comfortably put Tyloo to bed. I mean, Tyloo got put to bed reasonably comfortably by Vitality. It's not as if this Tyloo team was like super sick and a surprise package in that sense. Um, we know what Tyloo can do. They're pretty okay mechanically. They're going to play pretty aggressive Counter Strike. It's going to be a little bit weird and wonderful, but you, you should be able to beat Tyloo. So MIBR get a D from me. I think they were a team that I would be expecting to do better in an event like this. As you can see, number 20 in the world, they should be competing for one of those eight spots available. You know, if, if you predict that one of two of these teams, particularly Imperial, I think that's a little bit of an inflated world ranking. They're still kind of hanging on to their major result for a slightly inflated world ranking Imperial, or they were at this point. So, you know, you probably look at this and say, okay, it, uh, Imperial will probably miss out. Maybe there's another spot, at least one on offer, and MIBR should be the team alongside, like, Mao Sprout. These guys should be seriously thinking we can do this, we can qualify, and MIBR just don't, didn't look good enough. Um, the big reason MIBR disappointed more than the others is because they've spent more time in Europe. Like I say, they've had a couple of European events where they looked promising and have played some decent Counter-Strike. It's just not clicking for MIBR yet. Maybe a little bit soon to kick Woody. Admittedly, he did have a very, very low ceiling as an AWPer. And being the AWPer, if he was a rifler on MIBR, I'm sure they wouldn't have kicked him. Uh, Cello is the truth, man. Cello pretty much bangs out for MIBR whenever he's asked. I think Brennazan looks decent too. I think Jota looks good. I'm not so sure about Exit or what he does on the team. He's the guy I look at and I'm like, I don't really see what your role is or or what you're contributing. But everyone else I think is is really good, honestly. I, I do think they could be, even Turtle, who often is one of the bottom fraggers for MIBR. But when he's actually put into positions and in games is having good games he can frag though like i say the only guy I exit is the only one i've got question marks over but that's kind of the reason they disappoint me mibr because i can see that there's a decent team in there i think um it's just not really coming together at the moment so that's why they get a d they have higher i had higher expectations of mibr than i did of pain or complexity coming into this play and so that's why they get the d next up we got the boys yeah the boys order um I mean, Order fall into the kind of paying gaming category. They don't get to come to Europe to play all that often. The practice environment must be just GAC in, in their region. Maybe they get to play some of the better Asian teams, but there's just not a whole lot of good practice partners in their region. So unless you're going to come to Europe and you're going to do some big boy boot camping, I doubt you're going to ever be able to get much done. This is probably where you're like, okay, maybe we should be more competitive against a team like Imperial, who have kind of shown that they're not, the Imperial that turned up at the Major, right? That Imperial was probably a one-off Imperial that we're not going to see again. I don't think I can give them... I'll give them a C- minus because maybe you're like, we should be closer to Imperial. Yeah, we took a map, but but we got to like at least be competitive on the other two or more competitive than they were. Um, and their draw was not great. Having to play big first, I guess, isn't the easiest. Like, there's easier matchups they maybe could have gotten as their opener. Because um, big are one of those teams, like, you know, obviously they kind of disappointed in this play-in. And, uh, you know, when we get to big, they're going to get uh, a bad score. But it, it just feels like uh, the Counter-Strike from... The teams from this region just hit a ceiling that they can't break because they're not in Europe enough to play, honestly. They need to be playing more in a more competitive region. Maybe even moving 
I don't even think moving to NA is worth it. I think it's only really if you can get extended periods of time in Europe where you can boot camp that it's worth it for guys like the order guys. And, you know, yeah, they get a C minus. I think they maybe should have been a bit better in this series. But like I say, there's obvious reasons why teams like order and teams like pain are going to struggle in these types of, of play-ins and why I'm always going to have higher expectations, for example, of a team like Sprout who play in Europe all the time, get access to good tier two Europe prac and also probably get to prac the big boys every now and then a team like Sprout that there are probably bigger teams in Europe who are willing to scrim them. So like I say, C minus for order, the expectation is never going to be there when they come to an event like this. Next up, we got the boy Sprout. We got the little, the cheeky little, the, the Sprout boys, you know, the little, I, I don't know what this is. This was meant to be like a little seedling poking out the ground, but yeah, end up looking like something else. Um, yeah, this was, wow, spanked. Um, got shown what happens when you play against real tier one European opposition, even real tier one European opposition who've just changed the player. Um, they do the business against pain. This is probably what you would expect, you know, 2-1, absolutely fine. And then they get 2 ones by Vitality. Um, I, it wasn't bad from Sprout, but again, I, I, I feel for Sprout a little bit because obviously uh, they had... Um, what was his name? Mar Marix? Was that his name? Is that the guy who's now gone to OG Academy? Hang on, if I just type it in here. Yeah, so this is the guy who's now, as you can see with the Sprout t-shirt, he's now playing for OG Academy. So I feel bad that they had their team kind of uh, disrupted. Stair looks legit, very, very good player. Um, plays like an aggressive lurk on T side a lot of the time. Uh, actually takes a lot of their entry fights as well, Sprout. So it's pretty cool to see him um, often being towards the top or the top of their scoreboards. Um, I think he's their best player by a pretty decent margin. Um, Lonks, 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 however you want to say that, looks okay as well. I actually think he looks a pretty decent player from what I've seen. Um, probably needs a little bit more time playing at a slightly higher level because he definitely has some decision-making kinks to work out in his game, I think. But overall, I think Stair and Lonks are two really good young players to build around. Um, outside of those two for Sprout, I struggle... I don't know, the rest don't look good. Spitty, you know, has these weird pop-off games, to be honest with you, out of nowhere, Spitty. Um, but overall is not amazing. Uh, and, you know, we knew Spitty back when he was on Mouse way, way back in the day. He was kind of like a drag factor for that Mouse team. Um, the guy I really, like, really underwhelms whenever I watch him is Slacks. Like, Slacks, if we go to... Um, Sprout's team page. We'll just have a little look in it now. Um, we go roster here. Slacks is actually one of the best rated players. Uh, as you can see, one point, you know, one rating throughout, which is pretty solid playing at tier two Europe. Like that's a pretty solid uh, rating for sure. Um, but then whenever I see him at these like tier one events, he massively underwhelms. Uh, he, he really doesn't look great as an Orpe. He misses too many easy shots. Um, just generally not efficient enough with that weapon to justify the purchasing of it. He's the guy that I think really kind of lets this team down when they play in like tier one games. Don't know if it's nerves exactly what it is, but he definitely doesn't play up to his level um, that we see from him the rest of the time on Sprout. So he's the kind of question mark I have with this team. This Sprout team looks like on the cusp of being able to like do some damage at better events. Um, I think maybe with a bit more time with, with Lonks on the roster, maybe they can do some of that damage. At the bigger events, I'll give this one. This is disappointing for sure, getting spanked 16 3, but it was their opening game. They then did beat Pain and they then did take. I'll give it a C. Plus. I think the expectation probably on balance would have been these seven make it for me. And then I, I probably would have predicted who went through. I would have predicted these seven plus mouse. Um, maybe I would have given it to an IBR. Maybe Sprout. I would have said at least Sprout were in the conversation, the battle between those three. And I would have favored these two over Sprout. Um, to be honest, probably a little bit overly optimistic about MIBR if we're being honest. But hey, we, we all have those blind spots. So Sprout can have a C plus. I think this was a decent showing. I think they showed, again, they can take maps off of the big boys. Uh, they can beat the teams they should be beating. And they will occasionally get spanked by the big boys as well because they're not quite there yet. C plus for Sprout. It was perfectly fine. Decent showing. Not too bad. Next up, we've got big, um, big, 
yeah, it's an F, isn't it? It's just got to be an F. They beat order. Fine. That's like a result you should secure. You don't get credit for that. Lost to outsiders. It's got to be disappointing. Um, in general, the team just didn't really perform in this series. Um, Searson, after we've just seen the Rubek Cup and then he comes here and we see him again, uh, like not online. I don't know, man. It, it just feels like he's a fucking completely different player um, to this and compared to online. I think even with Keto standing in, they won Rubek Cup with Keto in the mix. I don't think Keto being a stand-in is any excuse. They've played as much in recent times with him as they have Farvin. This is an F for big. This is a big fucking flop. Massive fail. Massive disappointment at their home event in Cologne in Germany. Yeah, so, so disappointing. Um, you know, they come up against a resurgent Astralis. Yes, okay. Maybe there were easier matchups in this round two that they would have won if they'd have played, uh, but, you know, this is, it's just, it's so disappointing watching them lose 2-0 uh, to outsiders who clearly are having problems themselves betting in the new signings. You know, outsiders didn't do anything in the main event. They didn't really look threatening. Um, yeah, this is an F for big, what a fucking flop. What a flop. Like like somebody said in the comments when they requested this video, they commented on the, the, uh, the main Cologne scores on the doors and they said, you know, Big had said this was bigger than the Major for them. I don't know if that's necessarily true in some senses. I think the Major is still the most important uh, event of the season. But I can imagine Big players deep down emotionally feeling more attached to Cologne because it's their home event. So, yeah, this is an F. Their expectations should have been Cologne easily walked through into the into the main event. Should have been top four. They were the second highest ranked team here. They just won Rubek Cup. They should have walked into Cologne. They didn't. Humongous disappointment. And I think this will be a bit of a, a rough one for Big to take heading into the next season. I think they'll go into the player break with a lot of thoughts in their heads. Like, especially if you're Tabson, you know, you're the guy who basically is the heart and soul of that team. I think you're looking... Um, long and hard at, at what your team is and, and asking questions about how you can win Rubek Cup online and then go to this play-in and, and flop so spectacularly. I think you're asking yourself some pretty tough questions if you're big Tabson particularly, like I say. If you're, if you're Tabson or God be the heart and soul of that team, you're, you're thinking long and hard about this one because this, this was pretty fucking woeful. Next up, we've got the boys from China. We've got Tai Lu, uh, who gave a pretty decent account of themselves. Beating MIBR, played some very exciting CS and getting this one done. This is what Tai Lu do. They play just like explosive banger CS. It always looks uh, exciting. Ultimately outclassed by Mao's. Not the easiest again. Second round draw. There's some teams here. Um... I guess you have to play OO Nation probably if you want an easier matchup. Um, but yeah, Tyloo get a C plus. You know, they won a series against MIBI. I wouldn't have expected them to win that. Tyloo would have been one of the teams I would have thought would finish bottom, probably not win a game. Um, so yeah, respect to Tyloo. They not only won a game, but they actually won a series. Um, and, you know, they were, they were okay in this one. Uh, again... Same with a lot of these other teams. Practice environment in their home region. Unless they get to come to Europe and boot camp and play a bit more, they're never going to up their level. Um, not to a point where they can seriously expect to get through qualifiers like these. C+. Plus, don't have a lot to say about Tyloo. Didn't watch them as much as the other teams, to be honest, because I didn't have the highest expectations. Um, but what I did see of Tyloo was typical Tyloo. It was exciting CS. It was banger CS. It require, requires the individuals to kind of pop off and they're not going to pop up enough often enough against the teams of the caliber that you play in Europe to make it work. So yeah, C plus it was, it was fine. It was decent. Imperial. Now my uh, expectations for Imperial have gone <clears throat> absolutely fallen through the floor at a rapido pace. And I think this kind of emphasizes what has happened now with the the trajectory of cold zero and fallen obviously very nearly came together to form this imperial lineup together to really get the whole of the sk gaming band back together they didn't end up going for it 
uh, Cold Zera ended up choosing the route via OO Nation of trying to take some younger talent like Try and Morbs and and see what he could do with those. Obviously, Morbs no longer with it, but we've gotten to this iteration of OO Nation, which is kind of a meshing of the best bits of Godsent and you know Try, who was one of the best bits of the previous OO Nation lineup. Uh, they've kind of ditched a lot of the chaff, I'll be honest, which was never going to be good enough for OO Nation to be like a decent team, which, you know, full respect to to Cold Zero for eventually reaching the point where he's like, okay, we need to take some risks. Well, let's blow this lineup up and, and kind of start again. And the trajectories have kind of swapped now. Imperial, when the OO Nation... I don't know why I'm wearing these fucking headphones. I don't need them. Um... Like I say, the trajectories have kind of switched. When the team started, when the teams first came together, Imperial seemed to be getting the better of things. OO Nation were really struggling playing like tier two European cups, like online stuff, like uh, Malta Vibes and things like that, and really struggling to get like anything done against even tier two European opposition. Whereas Imperial were kind of sticking in their region, playing reasonably well, and then they came over for the Omen event thing um you know you can go and look at the at the event histories for imperial and our nation and see the omen wgr whatever event they played in um which was again sort of like tier two maybe even borderline tier three european teams but imperial won that event oo nation got banged out pretty early and now it's kind of swapped oo nation and now the more promising looking at the two imperial are just slipping and sliding down those world rankings um ever since the major imperial haven't looked very good um you know fur has kind of fallen off a cliff a bit and i think the whole imperial project was kind of put together with the majors in mind and the major circuit so it doesn't really surprise me that imperial are getting shit fuck all done uh honestly my expectations for this i honestly would have said even though you go to the team list and you look at the rankings and you think well if we're going by ranking it'll be these eight plus maybe these two or three that will compete for the final spot. I would have told you for free that this 17 is inflated by Imperial. They're probably a somewhere 20 to 30 type team. They're probably more in line with like the OO nations and pains of this world right now than they are like the mouses and, and the, the cusp of the top 20 teams. So where do I rank them is the question. Like what, what grade do they get? Not an easy first round game for sure, but still easier than maybe they could have gotten, depending on the seeding. I'm not sure how the seeding was done for this. Um, who did Vitality play? Vitality is five, played Tyloo, who at the bottom. So yeah, they did just go bam bang, 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 bang. Right? Pretty much, not exactly, but but basically, it was probably done this way via the ESL world rankings rather than like the HRTV ones. But so maybe there was not really a different matchup Imperial could have gotten being one of the middle ranked teams. But OK, whatever. It's still pretty disappointing to get spanked 16-6 oh, on Inferno, which is supposed to be a decent map for Imperial. Like Inferno and Overpass are the maps I think of when I think of Imperial. Um, they do beat Order 2-1, drop Inferno, a bit disappointing, but whatever, they get the job done, it's not the end of the world, and then they get reasonably comfortably beaten 2-0, obviously it goes double digits, 16-12, it's not a walkover at all, it's definitely a game, but they don't win a map, and they don't make either of them, like, super close. I think it's a D+, plus. I think it's slightly below the expectations I, I would have expected. The fact that they got OO Nation here, this is a, the best matchup they could have gotten. Like Astralis, uh, sorry, Big, Vitality, or Mouse would have all been harder games, I think, to get here. And the added... The added spice of it being an in, uh, a national battle between two Brazilian teams and two Brazilian teams with history. Obviously, you've got the other two members of the major winning core here. There's Furfall and FNX. There's Taco and Cold Zero, the other two. Um, I would have thought would have given Imperial a better chance. So, yeah, I think a D plus just because uh, my expectations were not very high for Imperial to make it through here. However, the way the draw went, the fact that they got probably the easiest lower bracket matchup in round one and then also the easiest lower bracket matchup in round two. Actually, now we're taking the plus off. We'll give them a D. They got the easiest draw they could have got and they still didn't look like. 
they were going to qualify. So yeah, that that's a D for Imperial. Um, not super impressive. I think Imperial will probably be better when the major cycle comes back around if they stick around over the period. I assume they are. I assume they're going to at least do this year. Um, and try for the next major cycle. So I expect them to be a little bit improved when the me next major cycle comes around. But yeah, they've been pretty woeful since Antwerp, haven't they? Really. Um, and then we'll, we'll, do you know what? While we're here, we'll very briefly touch on the runs that the teams who qualified uh, had to make it through. Um, obviously, first up, we have Heroic. Basically, did the business pretty easily, pretty straightforward. No worries there from Heroic. Um, you know, as far as runs through this bad boy go, it gets the thumbs up for sure. Um, who else do we have as well? Spirit Outsiders and Movistar obviously made it straight through. Spirit, again, no fuss or dramas really. Um, clearly better than the competition. Um, not a very difficult draw. Probably actually the easiest draw that they could have got as upper bracket because complexity, only Order or Tai Lu would have been comparable playing them in the first round and then getting OO Nation, the worst of the winners from the first round. You know, surprise result against Astralis there where Tri went, I'm a fucking nuclear boy. Um, but yeah, Spirit, get the thumbs up. You know, good run, no stress, no dramas. Outsiders, um, fair play to Outsiders for doing the business because they've not looked like super convincing with Fame and Norbert. Probably take a little bit of time because of the very specific way Outsiders play. But again, they get the thumbs up. They beat Big 2-0, so fair play to them. Uh, and then Movistar Riders, as we know, uh, eventually went on to like top four. But this was actually a pretty good run, I thought, as a as a Katowice like playing Katowice Cologne playing. Um, MIBR not the easiest first round matchup they could have got for sure, and then Vitality definitely not the easiest second round matchup they could have gotten. So fair play to Movistar. And then we had OO Nation, Maus, Astralis, and Vitality qualify through this lower bracket. Uh, Maus, you know, realistically did the business. Um, this was probably a little bit concerning. You probably expect to beat pain a little bit more easily and then honestly mouse if they'd have played heroic at a different time might have won that series to be honest because you know we saw heroic in the actual main event and then they were kind of duty poo poo um wait mouse ended up knocking them out in the actual event right hang on let's check that but i'm pretty sure they did didn't they yeah mouse actually ended up knocking them out um in the main event which is funny it's funny how that works um who else have we got i've forgotten already uh vitality astralis and oo nation yeah yeah, yeah. oo nation respect um didn't expect them to get through this qualifier but they did really well that's a great result um beating astralis in the opener and then getting the job done over imperial easiest easiest yeah because that astralis weighing sprout i guess they could have got sprout maybe but a sprout would have been a harder game i think than imperial so you know oh nation got a bit a bit uh lucky on the draw there i think and then vitality and astralis about what you'd expect to be honest um i think astralis have a good matchup against big it feels like they beat big a lot um but yeah, that's it. That's it. Scores on the doors for the Cologne player. And obviously didn't rank the teams that made it into the main event because I already ranked them with my main event video. I ranked these teams. None of them were going to get great scores, let's be honest. Um, unless you're like an absolute poo-poo team and you you somehow get close to qualifying, you're probably not going to get like a decent score out of this one. Um, let me know your thoughts. Did you agree? Did you disagree? What do you think of my wisdom? And if you didn't like it, you know, you're probably an Australian CS fan, in which case, like, what well, I can't, you know, I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry. What can I say? You know, Aussie, 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 oi, 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 or something. 